So, of course, you know, we have common names for these guys, too. So, for the monocarboxylic acids, the common names are generally derived from um, a Latin or Greek word that is related to a source for that acid. And so these names are, are somewhat historical. We take that Latin or Greek root name and add the suffix ic acid. So it's the same idea as the IUPAC names. And we've encountered um, a couple of these roots before. Um, so we've got form for one carbon and acid for two, propion for three, and buter for four. And then we also have special names for five and six. Yay. Um, so Valere and Capro. So these become formic acid, acetic acid, propionic acid, butyric acid, valeric acid, and caproic acid. Now they do give us a nice little mnemonic down here, which I hadn't heard before, but I kind of like it. Frogs are polite, being very courteous. So frogs are polite, being very curious. So we need to remember those. Um, for five and six, I anticipate that we'll run into those less frequently, but the first four we definitely run into quite a bit. They are very commonly used. But it's the same idea with the nomenclature. Now, one thing that's a little bit different with the common names, instead of numbering, they use Greek letters. And I'm sorry, but it's just how it is. And it, just to make matters worse, um, we always numbered um, with the carboxyl carbon number one. Well, the Greek letters start on the second carbon. And the reason, I think, for that is that you can't have a substituent on carbon number one. Right? There's no room for a substituent there. That's, it joins to the chain, and that's it. No substituents. So if you started alpha there, you would never have an alpha anything. Have you heard of alpha hydroxy acids? They're very common in anti-wrinkle creams and all these different facial things. Alpha hydroxy acids. These are carboxylic acids with a hydroxyl group on the alpha carbon, which is in which is carbon number two. So here's a specific example. This is, has no letter. This is alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And we won't go any farther than that with the Greek alphabet. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So for common names, oh no, this is the dicarboxylic acids. Yeah, I'm not going to hold you to these. I'm not going to make you memorize these. Because uh, personally, I don't remember them. I don't use them enough. Um, but oxalic acid, I don't know if you've ever used Barkeeper's Friend. Um, it's a scouring powder that is very different from Ajax or Comet or any, anything else like this. And it is predominantly oxalic acid. And it's really good at getting grease off and a variety of other things. And it's just this simple dicarboxylic acid. My, my arrow was having an issue today. So this is a diacid. So we also have common names for these diacids. So we've got oxalic acid, malonic acid, succinic acid, <coughs> glutaric acid, adipic acid, which just sounds kind of dopey, doesn't it? Adipic and pomelic acid. And they've got this mnemonic, oh my, such good apple pie. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Um, I, I'm not going to test you on these guys. They may, they'll, they'll probably show up in homework and examples and stuff, but I'm not going to test you on those guys. And, and isn't it nice how they didn't bother to change the, the chapter number on the tables? There's two versions of this book, a two-semester sequence and then what we have is just the second semester. And they, they just overlooked a few things. It's lovely. 
So there are some very common carboxylic acids. One of them is acetic acid. That's one that we run across in general chemistry. And we, in general chem, we write it like this, H, C2, H3, O2. And it always seemed like a very odd polyatomic ion than acetate ion. And now that we're learning about these carboxylic acids, it makes a little more sense. So here we've got, there's two carbons. And here's the three in the middle, and then the two oxygens, and then this hydrogen over here. Um, acetic acid is found in vinegar. Vinegar is usually about 4 to 8 percent acetic acid in water. And every time we use acetic acid in the lab, is a very, very distinctive smell. That vinegar smell, that's acetic acid. It's a very sharp odor. Um, oxalic acid. Um, so this is, is useful in cleaning. It's good at removing rust and ink stains. They use it to bleach straw and leather. It's found in spinach and cabbage. So small amounts of it are not toxic. But like most things, it is harmful at high concentrations. So you don't want to be eating the barkeeper's friend. I don't know why you would want to do that anyway, but uh, just not a good idea. But anything in too high of a concentration is bad for you, even oxygen and water, which are essential for life. So let's do these. Um, generating structural formulas from common names. So we're supposed to draw the structural formula. So adipic acid. What was it? Oh my such good apple pie. Oh my such good apple. So what was that? Five carbon? Adipic acid? Six. Six. Oh yeah, because you can't have just one. Dicarboxylic acid. So that's a six carbon acid. So we'll draw the six carbons. Uh, wants a structural formula. So we'll do a condensed structural formula. So there's one carbon, and these guys in the middle are just going to be CH2 groups. So there's going to be four of those in the middle. And there's a carboxyl group on each end. This carboxyl group on the end is double bond. It's got this, the carbonyl part and the hydroxyl part. And the one on the other end also has that. So that would be adipic acid. And then we've got beta chlorovaleric acid. Well, valeric acid was frogs are polite being very courteous. So frogs are polite being very, that's the five carbon. So we've got a 5-carbon carboxylic acid. Actually, I don't want to do it that way. I'm just going to string my carbons together and fill in hydrogens later. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, you generally see these with the carboxyl group on the right end. I mean, it doesn't have to be there, but that's typically what we see. So I'm going to put it on the end. So chlorovaleric, there's a chlorine on this somewhere. It's on the beta carbon. So this is, the al this is not the alpha carbon. That has no letter because you can't put anything there. This would be alpha. This would be beta. So the chlorine is over here. And then we have to fill in hydrogens. So this guy needs two hydrogens. And this one needs one. And this one needs two, and that guy needs three. So that's beta chlorovaleric acid. Any questions? couple more, malonic acid and phenylacetic acid. So 
Malonic acid was the oh my, such good apple pie. So malonic acid is a diacid with three carbons. Yeah. Gotta press the drawing thing. Three carbons. It's a diacid. So we're going to have a carboxylic acid on each end. Now, what, that's a common name, malonic acid. What would be the IUPAC name for that? Propane dioic acid. Because it's three carbons, so that's propane. Propanoic acid would be with one carboxyl group, but this has two, so propane dioic acid. Phenyl acetic acid. Okay, well, what's acetic acid? How many carbons? Two. So we got two carbons. Here's the carboxyl group. And phenyl, what's that? That's an aromatic ring. That's a benzene ring as a substituent on something else. So there's only one place we can put it. We can't put it on this carbon. That carbon's full. So it has to go on that carbon. That's why there's no number here. So we'll put the, the phenyl over here. Benzene ring. And then this guy needs two carbons in there. Phenyl acetic acid. 